I paused for five seconds because I didn't know what to say. So my mind went blank and I said, um, he's my cousin. <laughs> I'll do the same too. I'm not going to lie. I know you see it. I know you see it. Okay. Okay. So I'm looking at the camera like my whole, the whole top of my head is cut off. Give me a second. Hold on. Um, okay. I hope this works. I know I got to crop out some of this video. Listen guys, we got a new, a new, new, new setup today. As you can see, I got a little white background, you know, keeping it very professional in here. Very cute. Very cash. Guys, give me a minute. Been a while. Um, can we can we talk about the hair glow up? Guys, this is all of my hair. Do you remember when I did the big chop two years ago? <laughs> Period. Period. So we don't have a lot of time to film. Okay, it's just the mail. We don't have a lot of time today to talk, guys, but you don't even you probably don't even notice it, but hey. Let me get rid of this thank you guys how have you been how's everything been in your world your life i haven't sat down and filmed for a while um so my last episode was filmed in october and we're in january bit okay if you last remember um i was talking a lot about how much my job was stressful and yeah they said bye and i said okay bye so yeah, if you know, you know what that means, right? So you know what? We're going to do this full time so we can get out of it. And I'm a girl of many hobbies. And one thing about me is I want to make money from my hobbies. I love making a quick buck. I love little odd jobs like that. So don't worry about me. I'm going to be okay. But I was like, I need to give, give my people something. Today we're doing an episode of zanji does tea while i was gone i did start a new series called zanji does chat and i'm looking up like i don't want to confuse them so zanji does chat and zanji does tea and zanji does in general i just want to break it up to you guys and explain what it all is so zanji does is me right my channel mostly consists of following me on my curly hair journey right but because i'm so um how would you say i'm so i really want to make sure that my content isn't only about hair because there's so much more to me than my hair and honestly sometimes i can neglect my whole hair for a week so it's like i don't you know what i mean it's like when you decide do you want to be a makeup influencer or beauty content creator and then you're like well do i really want to wear makeup every day and i know that they don't but you know what I mean? Like, is it really your life life? You know what I mean? I'm passionate about my hair. Clearly, you see the results or whatever. And I feel like my camera is going in and out of focus. So I'm going to apologize in advance right now. But, um, yeah, so ZNG does is, you know, it's not my real name. It's my little YouTube name, my social media name. It's very close to my real name. But, you know, the only reason... So people ask me, why do you just not make your real name? Because my real name is unique as is. It's, it's, it sounds like Angie, the f first letter has just changed. Um, and one, I like the letter Z, it's such a cute letter, letter. And, um, for two, I feel like unless if, if I can get this to blow up and make money from it, I don't see why I should change it to my real name. But for now, I like the feeling of having my identity protected because, um, for my last job that was remote. I was able to get in there and get out and nobody knew, you know, and I feel like people are messy when they find you on social media and I don't post nothing bad, but people are weird about social media. So they're like, what do you do? Like this and that. And I feel like employers definitely now more than ever look into that kind of stuff and they'll find, find any reason to say, no, you can't do this job. No, you can't this. No, you can't that. So with that being said, it just, it's fun. It's, it's like a stage name. It gives me that Hannah Montana, Miley Cyrus vibe too. It's fun to pretend, but, um, yeah, Zanji does. And the does part is just me doing things. So that was the premise of it at first was just me doing things on a camera. But then I was like, you know what, let me hound in on my natural hair journey because I grew up, you know, I'm Dominican and, if you know, in Dominican culture, to say the least, um, European beauty standards is what is most celebrated, most 
um, strive for. Um, but you know, that's not what today's episode is about. Yeah, I just wanted to focus on natural hair and just see the potential of my hair. And this is a genuine potential here. So if you're seeing this video and you're like, okay, her hair is giving, please go watch my other hair content. There's a bunch of stuff there. I tried things out, tried products out, um, trial and error, gave my honest review. You know, I'm not ever being paid to say something is good or bad. So I'm just like, just being myself, just being honest about what I'm trying out. And I am somebody who does not have money like that. Like, not to say I'm broke on camera, but like, ain't nobody got all this money to buy pillow soft every other week. You know, like I keep it very budget friendly for better terms, right? I, I like to be budget friendly. Um, and so the products I try out are probably products you see in Walmart and stuff. You know, it's like nothing crazy. So don't feel deterred because i feel like i see a lot of curly hair creators and girl they just be buying stuff and i'm like i can't afford that next video you know what i mean so um yeah so that's what zanji does is all about but i have two series on my youtube channel aside from the hair stuff which is zanji does tea which is what you're watching today and zanji does chat which is something that i recently started so zanji does tea is a, an advice series so thank you so much for clicking today it is what it sounds like you know i know the girls are doing this a lot recently too where you submit and i read it and i gave you advice right um, because I'm still a small channel, I don't receive submissions just yet, but if you want to go ahead and start, my email is at the bottom of the screen and it's going to be on the screen throughout the episode because I don't have submissions just yet and I do still want to show, you know, my advice giving skills. I just go to Reddit and I read people's stories um, just for preface, just for a disclaimer. I have made sure that all of the Reddit's posts that I'm reading that they're allowed to be read. If you hear this episode and it's your story and you have decided that you don't want your story on my channel, please message me on Instagram. I will put my social medias on the screen as well. They're all as Angie does, but if you don't know how to spell it, I'll put it on the screen and just let me know. I have no problem with deleting it and then re-uploading it without your story. You know what I mean? So let's keep it cute and pushing. And then as Angie does chat is um, a podcast that I kind of started where it's not really submissions, but it's getting more into detail about things, life advice, like really 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 deep advice like i don't really know how to word it differently like it's more like um i'm talking about topic in in more detail so it 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 could be explained as a longer version of you know what what i'm doing today so for today we're gonna read one two three four four or three four or three stories i'm really excited i'm so excited um but yeah this is normal and every zanji does tea episode is like a little debriefing in the beginning i do put time stamps at the bottom so people who don't care for this you know they are they already skipped this part but if you're here you know thank you for watching um i always say make sure to watch till the end before you decide if you want to click off the video make sure to like subscribe do all that fun stuff and yeah i always do a little debriefing a little update on my life and stuff and honestly i feel like the intro is long, long enough and i don't want to drag you guys but yeah welcome as always and let's get started so today i don't know where to start and i always do that i'm always like i don't know where to start yeah so if you see me looking down i have my computer in front of me let me start with this one so the title of this one says i hate my adhd son and i've said this before but i have adhd and i am on medication um if you don't know what adhd stands for it's attention deficit let me let me get the right time for that because i'm not let's get the google definition because i just am so bad at repeating things adhd is one of the most common neurodevelopmental disorders of childhood it is usually first diagnosed <sighs> okay like come on let's get to the point right children with adhd may have trouble paying attention controlling impulsive behaviors may act without thinking about what the result may be or or may be overly active um for me I have trouble paying attention. I have trouble organizing my tasks for the day, like, very badly. So, you know, I just take my medication, and it really helps me. Um, and it's not just like, a, oh, you just take a medicine to just organize your thoughts. How cool. Wow. How lazy of you. No. Um, I'll get overwhelmed and have a lot of anxiety and depression because I can't figure it out. So, with that being said, I want to start with this one because I can relate. And this parent or whoever saying they hate 
their ADHD son. That's very unfortunate. I often think about when I have a child, like how that's going to be if they're going to have ADHD and how I'll handle that. I mean, obviously with grace, because I'm not going to sit here and be like, you're annoying. But um, so far, no complaints from the people around me. They don't even notice that I have it. You know what I mean? It's like a, they're not like, that's just how she is. You know what I mean? Like, oh, oh, she's just having a moment. And then sometimes when I take my medication, I get so focused, like, um, and don't worry, I've gone through like trials of, um, the prescription, like the doses so that, because if you take a dose that's way too high, you're like zombie mode. Like you don't talk, you might not eat, drink, sleep. Like that's when it's too high. And then, you know, the right level, which is what I'm actually on my medication right now. So, um, I'm focused right now. I'm having a great time. I know that after this episode, I'm going to edit another video. And, you know, I, I, I'm i looking at my time. You know, I didn't go on a tangent in the beat. Like, I went on a little one, but not really. You know what I mean? Like, I could have made it longer. But, you know, like, that's that's the kind of things. You know what I mean? So, um, let's go ahead and start with this first story. I'm sorry. I know as his mother, I'm supposed to love him no matter what. But I cannot stand the little brat no matter how hard I try. He is the literal definition of a troublemaker. He brings nothing good to our family. I ain't got, let me stay positive because she's getting on my nerves already. My son is eight years old. He is diagnosed with ADHD and ODD. And I believe that is, oh no, I thought that was OCD. Let me, let's look that up guys. ODD, what is that? Mm, oppositional defiant disorder a frequent a frequent and ongoing pattern of anger irritability can i read today arguing and defiance towards parents and authoritative figures okay um i'll say this so when i was when i you know i had ad i got diagnosed with adhd in about high school towards the end of middle school i think no i think it was just high school well, whenever it was, there were certain classes where they put us, put people like myself and other people with other situations um, all together just to be more, for teachers to be more attentive to us and help us more because we needed it. Um, and I definitely want to say that I feel, I want to assume um, nicely, kindly, I want to assume that I was around people like this that possibly had ODD. Um and I could see that it's, it is very frustrating. But, of course, I have no way of knowing that if it was really ODD or not. But um, let's continue. He does not listen or do what he's told. Ugh. He has broken boundaries over several occasions. Let's remember he's eight years old, by the way, guys. He never follows the rules, is taking an emotional, physical, and financial toll on his father and I and the rest of the family. We can no longer visit family for the holidays because he is out of control. I can't take him to a damn Walmart for errands because he's wandering around touching or whatever he can find. He has caused us thousands of dollars in damages from him throwing rocks or eggs at people's cars. Damn, what the heck? He has caused two car accidents. I cannot spend a week without having the cops called on him for random things. He smacked a neighbor's truck to set the car alarm off. Mmm... He doesn't understand when you tell him no. Actually, he will not take no for an answer. He will get violent and destructive when he's mad. He loves to scream, kick, bite, and make a scene when things will go his way. He, I'm just skimming through because she's just providing a lot of examples. But school basically started three weeks ago and he was suspended twice in the last three weeks for his violent behavior. I just want to lock myself away and throw the key away. This kid is too much. I'm not asking the world of him i just want him to behave and be a good kid um yeah so when i first saved this because she obviously in the title just says i hate my adhd so not adhd and odd these are two very different things um and i want to say unfortunately i don't i'm not a licensed therapist number one and you know i don't have odd so i can't really help in that aspect but that seems like I want to say it sounds like a very extreme version of that. Hopefully I'm not wrong, but sometimes I read the comments to kind of gauge the conversation, right? So somebody said, I have ADHD. 
I have an ADHD and ODD kid and it's a lot. My son can be pissed off at a statue. Okay, so this person's telling her that he does need medication and therapy. And this parent says, once my son finds out that I'm not fighting back, he just doesn't fight. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, the, that comment was pretty straightforward and to the point. Definitely the title of this was misleading for me because I thought it was going to be like, I can't stand that my kid won't focus, I can't stand this and that and that, you know, but th this definitely seems like a bigger issue than what it is. I would say if you're a parent and you just don't know what to do and your child has been diagnosed with certain... I would say the best practice should be, and I'm not a parent, but this is coming from the child point of view, you know, ask doctors as many questions as you can, ask about medications, if the child is old enough to understand, have those conversations about medication with them, I want to say, and I'm not sure how it, like... I'm, I mean, I'm going to say this. So there was what, like my mom, once I had ADHD, she, she didn't, she trusted me with my, me, with my medicine. Like she was never a parent that was like, I'm going to watch your pills and give you them every day. And maybe that was a bad decision. Maybe it wasn't. But I mean, I never like contemplated ODs or, you know, things like that. And I never wanted to take more than one ADHD pill. Like that's ridiculous. Um, so there was a funny time where I got my wisdom teeth taken out and they give you those kind of drugs, you know what I'm saying? And for that, she was like, um, she took the pill bottle and was like, all right, tell me when you're in pain and I'll just provide it for you. And she was very vigilant about the hours and just, you know, and that. So he is eight, obviously, so I'm not saying just give your eight-year-old access to all his medicine and let him do it by himself. But I think having open conversations about medicine, what it is, what it's going to do, what it does versus take this and don't ask me no questions you're not don't fight with me just take it just take it you know what i mean that is definitely gonna cause a reaction i feel like i have been watching a lot of two hot takes and she talks a lot about occupational therapy and it's probably gonna be good for him too maybe being around children like him who I'm not sure, like, because I haven't been around this, and I'm sorry for a bad start for this episode, but um, I'm not sure of him being around other kids that are angry as well, like, with ODD, um, if they're going to react badly with each other or if they will react positively. So, definitely everybody in these comments is saying medication, medication, and then also for the ADHD portion, definitely medication too. It might be helpful to kind of organize the anger period but like i'm not a doctor and this definitely sounds like a doctor question like a question for your doctor so i would say it's always great to have a good medical team for your children um especially when they have multiple things going on with them and um i was i want to say i didn't have that many things going on but i did have some things going on and one thing I can say is that I never hated going to the doctors. I, I mean, I would hate when they'd be like, girl, you need to lose a little weight. And I'd be like, yeah. So that's what I would say is like, mm, consider that, you know, and, and try to make it fun for him. Because if I didn't like going to the doctors, then I definitely know I would be miserable. But it was it was fun, you know, and it wasn't fun. It wasn't horrible is what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? So let's go to story number two and comment down below what you think do you think that do you think what do you think this mom should do or dad should do like what would you recommend let's go to story number two. Oh my god sorry guys the camera just cut off so i'm gonna read this title again of this number two so it says a strange legal not bio dad has offered me money to walk me down the aisle how should i respond I think that says a lot to begin with, but let's go ahead and read this. I am a 25-year-old female, and my mom and dad were both 47 when they were engaged. My mom cheated on my dad. My mom and dad decided to continue with the marriage, even after finding out she was pregnant with me. And when I was born, a DNA test proved I wasn't my dad's child. But my dad still signed the certificate. They got married, had more kids. 23 to 12 and raised us all normally 
except i always felt that dad had a better relationship with my siblings but i put that down for them being boys and my sister being a tomboy while i was the most girly one when i was 11 my grandparents maternal late 60s told me the truth and they said they were in touch with my real dad who was 47 if i wanted to meet him i didn't meet him but i confronted my parents and acted out my parents decided that as my grandparents had done this they should fix it so they sent me to live with them until i was ready to rejoin my family it's giving that's not that wasn't i don't like that they did that to you like for what like like a punishment like because you're experiencing an angry emotion about what's going on like that's just not right what my mom and dad repeatedly reached out i ignored them and they stopped when i was about 18 at 18 i moved out of my grandparents house and in with my boyfriend had some kids and when i left the boyfriend and moved back in with my grandparents at 21 i met my real dad for the first time it was weird i think we both went in with certain expectations and we both got let down oh that sucks we are facebook friends he sends me cards and gifts and gifts for the kids that's nice i have occasional contact with my parents but i keep ignoring them i mean yeah i don't i don't see i don't see why you wouldn't like she's her like you guys kicked her out because she was experiencing a lot of emotions about her her life like literally like that's just fucked i met my now fiance 22 he's wonderful my kids love him and he asked me to marry him i said yes i told my grandparents and siblings and one of them told my mom and dad snakes who told you to do that it be it be them family members are snitching on you like okay interesting my dad then reached out so not her real dad the the one that was part of the kicking out he called and said i will offer you 20k for the wedding he said it's a fund him and her mom saved up for her. They meant to give it to her at 18, but they chose not to when I was ignoring them. I debated taking the money, but then decided not to. He offered it again. Each time I refused. There was one point I almost took the money, but then my dad asked me if my... Then my real dad asked... My, my dad that I lived with asked my asked me if my real dad was invited and he wasn't happy when I said yes. So that made me for sure not want to take the money. And he said, all right, can I just give it to you just to walk you down the aisle? I have no idea why he feels so strongly about this, but most of my siblings are pressuring me to let dad walk me down the aisle i asked them if this is their his way of getting back in my life and they said maybe but they don't know any more that i than i do and they want and they want him at the one at the wedding he told them he won't go unless he's able to walk me i asked him if he just wants to do it for him or because i'm his daughter literally yeah first comment I don't blame you for being angry with your parents. Dropping you off at your grandparents after a huge revelation like that must have felt like betrayal. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Like, what? She said, I thought about sitting down with them and talking about it. Everybody, her family thinks that the parents did the right thing. The siblings think that the parents did the right thing. Their grandparents think that they, that sh the mom and dad did the right thing. That's fucked up. So... For what i'm getting from this to be honest is given i want to pay you to appear like i'm involved i want to pay you for the photo memories i want to be a part of the event because you are my way of getting through this this phase of life and i feel like we forget that um unfortunately you know for the bad parents right not the good parents the bad parents they still feel like they're entitled to the perks of having a child which is after they have you they're still the perks of um grandkids marriage graduation um those milestones like doing those with your kid but i feel like if there is no if there is no no relation then what do you think like it, you're you're making it very clear that this is about you so much so that you're willing to pay 20k 
to simply just do the part that you want to do now what if hold on now what if literally like what if literally he you're like i'll take your 20k but you can't walk me down i actually want nobody walk me down and he's talking about some no i need to walk you down that's the only way i'll go then you ain't coming then you ain't coming comment down below what you guys think about that because that's what i think i think that mm -mm. i don't i don't i don't agree with it i don't love it i don't like it and i do have to cut this story short because i'm running out of time but mm -mm. comment down below what y'all think i would say you're not coming you're not and it's the fact that y'all cut me off for me because i was betrayed like you guys have a lot of work to do first things first you know what i mean <sighs> all right let's read unfortunately the last one this is a short one yeah let's do a quick cute short one i'm sorry for the very short episode I promise the next one will be better but i have people coming over soon and that requires me to not be in front of the camera but i hope this one is funny but let's read the last story it's titled i called my boyfriend my cousin and i don't know what to do about it i will always oh my god i need to stop banging on the table i always say i'm not gonna do it because it sounds so funny on the mic i always say being embarrassed is a choice okay i mean sometimes you can't help it but when little oopsies from what i read in the title when little oopsies happen like this just take it like a champ and move on that's just what I, that's what I always say. Oh, my bad. I'm embarrassed shit. You know what I mean? I mean, that's just how I am. Let's go ahead. So let's let's see what will happen and why she don't know what to do. Why he or she or they don't know what to do about it. Hello, everyone. I'm in need of advice. So around a month ago, I met this guy. He took me out on a couple of dates. And by date three, he made it very clear that he was just dating for fun and didn't want anything serious. Okay, communication king. He also told me that me and him were not boyfriend and girlfriend and that he didn't. He didn't care if I talked to other men. When he said that, I agreed and didn't really care because it didn't bother me and I appreciate his honesty. Well, fast forward, we continue to hang out and he introduces me to his family and friends as his girlfriend. See, and that's what I'm talking about. Because why are y'all doing that? I can't. Like, you just said something and... All his brothers and friends would refer to me as his girl. Ooh. Also, he would constantly ask me if I was talking to anyone else. Would always tell me, like, one thing about me is if you say something, don't do not do something else because you're pissing me off now. Like, what are we talking about? Okay, so she confronted him because I was going to say hello. When I confronted him about this, he told me that I don't care if you're with other people. We're not together. Okay, giving gaslight. Like, I would cut him off. Like, you're annoying me. Like, you're saying one thing, doing another. Don't be weird. Like, don't be fucking weird. One day, me, him, and his friends were all hanging out. And he FaceTimes me. She. Wait. One day, me, him, and his friends were all hanging out. Oh, and my friend FaceTimed me. She asks me who I'm with. And I say his name. And then my friends say, and what is he in relation to you? Why she say it like that? I paused for five seconds because I didn't know what to say. So my mind went blank and I said, um, he's my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> I do the same too. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, oh, it's my, my cousin or something, you know. Nobody special, you know, somebody I know. She was definitely being sarcastic. Like, she was just joking, you know what I mean? Anyways, well, he went off on me for calling me his cousin, accused me of talking to other people, and didn't speak to me for the rest of the night. He still hasn't spoken to me. I'm so confused because he kept telling me we aren't together. I know I should have said he's my cousin, but what else can I say? Is the relationship between us a lost cause? I like him, and I would love for us to talk to him again. I want to comment on this right now and be like, girl, do not talk to him. He's weird. Oh, my God, guys. People are literally down the street. Okay. Um, With all that being said, this is clearly giving me teenager kitty vibes don't waste your time talking to him anyways he's giving you mixed signals and one thing about me is i'm 25 years old i've been down this road before when they're throwing you mixed signals they're trying to throw you for a loop trying to confuse you trying to dangle you like this and have you by their waist and they make you feel like you're special that oh they've changed their mind and then 
they're just doing that to be able to flip the switch on you and then be able to be like, yeah, well, I never said we was. But then treat you like a girl. You're not a girlfriend. You know what I mean? So that's just, it's just all BS at the end of the day. I wouldn't even talk to him, period. And I'm glad you called him your cousin because I fuck him. Don't lie to me. Don't gaslight me. And don't be a corny ass and say one thing and do another. Period. Period. But comment down below what you think about that. Yeah, dating is so annoying. Like, I can't even go on a tangent about this, but thank you guys so much for watching today's episode. I hope it was a nice little taste. Um, usually I do read three to four stories. Longer ones give a little more detail and advice. So today wasn't my best, but I hope you still liked it. I hope it was so enjoy enjoyable. And I hope you guys have a great day, morning, night, evening, whenever you're watching this. Um, make sure to comment down below your thoughts and have a discussion about what was said today. If you felt compelled to submit email below thank you please follow me on my socials too that would be very helpful and also make sure to subscribe if you like this episode if you want to see more hair content then you know what to do then you know what to do period so thank you for watching today's episode and i really appreciate it and you guys have a great rest of your day i don't want to leave you i'm gonna miss you that was so corny bye <laughs> thanks for watching Thank you.